kids, I heard a call for help. My insulin pump is broken. How am I going to get insulin now? That's an excellent question. Many people with type 1 diabetes utilize insulin pump therapy as a way to deliver their insulin. If an insulin pump stops delivering insulin or breaks, you are at risk of high blood sugars and developing diabetic ketoacidosis within hours. Without an insulin pump, you must find another way to receive insulin, such as multiple daily injections. If you think your insulin pump is broken, first, contact your insulin pump company. All companies have a 24-hour tech support. You can find their contact information on the back of some pumps or on the pump company's website. If the company determines that your pump has malfunctioned and is no longer safe to use, they will mail you a replacement pump if it is still in warranty. During this time, you still need insulin. How do I get insulin if my pump doesn't work? That's an amazing question. When you were first diagnosed with diabetes, you managed your blood sugars with multiple daily injections. Many people with type 1 who do not use insulin pumps do this every day with a long-acting and a rapid-acting insulin. Remember when you had to test your blood sugar and calculate your blood glucose correction and cover your carbohydrates? During this time, long-acting insulin was given once a day. Your dose for rapid-acting insulin was calculated every time you ate carbohydrates. Does that mean I have to give myself a shot? Fantastic question! Yes, within two hours of your pump breaking, you must give yourself long-acting insulin. This is why it is so important that you or your parents have long-acting insulin as a backup at home or whenever you travel. How do I know how much insulin to give? Wow, you're so smart. Let's figure that out together. To determine how much long-acting insulin you should take, you will need to find your total daily basal amount in your pump. If you do not know how to find this, call the pump company 24-hour tech support for help. Again, you can find their number on the back of your pump. This is a great reminder to parents or type 1 individuals to always keep a record of your insulin pump settings. One great way to do this is to take a picture of your after-visit summary after each visit with your provider so you always have it with you in case your screen breaks. Once you find your total daily basal amount, this amount will equal your long-acting insulin dose. For example, if your 24-hour total daily basal is 12.2 units, you will round to the nearest whole unit. So you would need to inject 12 units of long-acting insulin. You must give this dose every 24 hours. Also, if your pump breaks at 1 o'clock p.m., this is the time you would give your long-acting insulin each day until your new pump arrives. When you are ready to restart your insulin pump, wait until your next dose of long-acting insulin is due. And watch closely for lower blood sugar trends that night out of concern for overlapping lantus on basal insulin. Thanks, Captain T1D. I'm feeling less stressed already. No problem. Don't forget, you need to give yourself injections of rapid-acting insulin as well every time you have carbohydrates, just like you would if you had your insulin pump on. You got this! Thanks, Captain T1D! If you have any questions, contact your insulin pump company or call your pediatric endocrinology office. This video does not replace the recommendations of your doctor's office. <laughs>